It's so nice to be able to come outside on your porch or patio and relax, enjoy a nice cool breeze. But if your relaxation is being interrupted by insects bugging you, you might want to consider screening in your porch or patio. Today we're going to screen in this patio with the product by Screen Tight. It's easy to install and you can do it yourself. But before we actually put the screen up, we need to frame out this patio area. The first step in framing out the patio is to attach the bottom plate. I'm going to put this in place and we want to make sure that the ends are flush with the outside of the support post holding up the patio cover. Okay, that end's flush. I want to make sure that this end is flush. Now, as you can see, I've already measured, pre-cut, and painted my boards. That's so that when I put the screen up later on, I don't have to worry about messing up the screen to paint the boards. I'm going to use a hammer drill to attach the bottom plate to the concrete slab of the patio. I'm using a masonry bit, and this is designed to go through the wood and straight into the concrete. Put the bit right in the middle of the bottom plate and then drill through the board into the concrete. I've pre-drilled my holes for the bottom plate, and now I'm going to attach it to the concrete slab using tap cons. These screws are especially designed for concrete. The teeth go into the concrete and hold the bottom plate in place. Use a drill to attach this. I've attached the top plate the same way as I attached the bottom plate, and now I'm ready to put the studs in place. Now, as you can see, I have a wood backing right here that's part of the siding of the house, and that's what I'm going to attach the stud to. But if you don't have that, if all you have is a brick veneer, then you'll need to use the tap cons again to attach the stud to the brick. But here's a tip for you. Don't put it in the mortar. Make sure that you put the tap con through the brick itself. I'm going to tap this in place. It's flush. Okay, now I'm going to use an impulse nailer to nail this in place. You can rent one of these for about $25 a day and it will make the job go a lot faster. You need to put a nail about every 8 to 12 inches. Okay, I'm ready to put another stud in place. Now you can space the studs as far apart as you want to, depending on the look that you want. In this case, I'm putting one right in the center of the bottom plate. Tap this into place. Let's check to make sure that it's level before I nail it in place. And it is great. Now again, I'm going to use the impulse nailer but I'm going to toenail this in place. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to put the nails in at an angle so that they go through the stud into the bottom plate. Okay, I'm going to put one in on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the top. I've framed out the whole patio and I've also added a chair rail. Now I'm at ready to add the vinyl base strips. Now this is basically the same idea as a regular window screen. If this were the opening, this is what would hold the screen in these channels right here. Now I'm using a base strip that's one and a half inches thick and that's so that it will cover my two by four. But if you're using a four by four, these do come in larger sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and put one screw in to hold this in place. And now I'm going to use snips to cut the bottom to length. I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the stud and then cut it off. Now I'm ready to install the base strips horizontally. Now the reason why I cut the vertical strips just to the top and the bottom of the studs is so that when I put the horizontal strips up on the top plate and the bottom plate, I can have one continuous strip. That way I'm not going to have to make a cut on each side of the stud and it's going to look a lot better. Once you have the base strips in place, you're ready to add the screen. Now the screen is made out of fiberglass and it comes in different sized rolls. 
you want to make sure that you have a piece that's larger than the opening. Now this is called a roller knife and this will cost about $10. It has a roller and it also has a knife to cut the screen. Once you have it the approximate size, then just use this knife to cut it. Hold the screen so that it's square over the opening and then take this rubber spline and use your roller to push it down into the channel. This is what holds the screen in place. Here's a tip for you while you're putting in the spline. Gently pull on one end to hold it taut and that's going to make it go into the channel a lot easier. Once you get to the corner, simply take the knife and cut it off. Now you're ready to cut away the excess screen. Hold the knife right outside of the channel and then gently pull on the screen and cut it away. Now that you have the screen in place, you can add the vinyl cap as a finishing touch. It also is going to make it look a lot better. This is the base strip. The vinyl cap goes right over the top of it like that so that this piece goes right in the middle channel. Use a non-marring rubber mallet to pound this into place. Just line it up and then pound it in. All right, we're finished with this project with this solid vinyl screen door and materials from Screen Tight and all of the lumber. This whole project cost us less than $350. It looks fabulous. And now it's time to sit back and relax.